So let's take a look at the heavyweight category, okay? Now, this is the talk of the town because right now, the way this works out is we have right here in pool A, Teddy, who is multiple time world championships. He's lost his first match in years just recently, but the Japanese player who beat him is not in the draw. They threw out their other player, Harasawa of Japan, and he's down here on the other side of the bracket. So I think just looking at this, Teddy obviously does not have an easy path to the final, but you know, I do think I'm just gonna pencil him in here and I'm just gonna say it. He's walking his way all the way to the final. Um, but that's not to say like, I've seen the Austrian guy give Teddy a run for his money. I've seen Sasson give Teddy a run for his money. I've seen Bastiev of Russia give Teddy a run for his money. So he's definitely, definitely got his work cut out for him. But at the end of the day, these are gonna be tough matches for him, but only tough. I don't, I'm not sure how these players beat him per se. So let's pencil this in and let's just go. France, France, and just say that's that's what's happening. Um, just like that, it is what it is. But I'm I'm not done there. Um, let's go ahead, and I'm going to say Russia is advancing here. Um, down here, like there, there's obviously some tougher matches right here. Um, but I can easily say Georgia, Georgia, Cuba, Brazil, and I'm just, this one match doesn't really matter in Poland. Um, uh, don't really care about that one. Let's, let's kind of show these paths really quick. Here we go. Here we go, there we go. Okay, so let's just talk about this really quick because again, we're talking about every one of the guys Teddy has to fight to pull this off, um, have given him a run for his money and taken him the distance, right? The Austrian boy, the, is the Israeli, the Russian, and down here, the Georgian is actually like a counter Teddy player because He's a little bit smaller than Teddy. He moves a lot, he grips a lot, he uses his feet a lot. Um, that's definitely gonna be a challenge, but I'm giving Teddy the advantage in all of these matches because he just lost recently in Paris to the Japanese guy, and I think he went back and he realized like, oh, I have to get back in shape, I have to get back to work, and he's gonna be coming with a vengeance to secure a gold medal and he's gonna be shutting everybody down and he's gonna be making sure that he doesn't lose any space, doesn't give an inch, and he's gonna ensure these wins rather than just kind of going out there and playing. But down here, um, these brackets I think are a little bit easier to pick from. Um, just looking at this, let's just go like that. Um, yeah, the, those two are pretty self-explanatory. I don't think anybody is touching the Japanese player in this division, um, at least from the pool C portion of it. And then here, there we go. And I think that's just an easy way to look at it. He's such a big guy. He's dominating in the division. That's why he's number two going into this. But down here, this... <laughs> This pool is a little bit more of a challenge, right? As a whole, because when you look at this smaller bracket, Frey should be an easy win for Kerpolik. But again, I just wanted to kind of point this out that it's not gonna be a cakewalk for him, right? It is gonna be a challenging match, but I think he pulls it out, no questions asked. Um, down here, I think we're gonna go, um, I don't think it matters because I think Grohl beats both these guys hands down and this match should be a metal match. I don't think 
either one of these guys should be fighting this early on in the division. But it is what it is. It's the Olympic Games. You're going to fight some tough guys. But we have Kerpalik of the Czech Republic versus Grohl of the Netherlands. Who wins? Both these guys were former 100 kilo guys that after 2016 have moved up into the heavyweight division and they both made a name for themselves climbing to three and six as the seeds at the Olympic Games in a short amount of time. Uh, both of these guys are contenders to beat Teddy over the Japanese player. So I would have loved to have seen, you know, these guys on opposite side of the practice and both have their shot at ending Teddy's Olympic reign um, and a possible gold medal, but we're not gonna be able to do that because we've put Teddy into the final. So only one of them are gonna have their shot. The question is, who's it gonna be? Um, they know each other very well, and this could go either way. I will say, though, that regardless um, of who wins this match, I think this person is ending up in the final. Um, that's just the way I see it. I don't think the Japanese player beats either one of them. The question is, who's game enough to go all the way through and make it? Um, and I think just looking at it, I think I have to do this. And then because I did that and I said this, we're obviously gonna pencil that in and then we're gonna mark it off like that. And the reason for that and the reason, you know, I'm kind of putting, you know, Kerpalik over Grohl in this situation is Grohl actually had to beat a teammate out in order to get a slot. And again, I said this in a previous draw, when you have to overcome an obstacle that makes the Olympics uncertain for you, it can feel like a sense of relief, which means you're on your downturn instead of your upturn for the games. And I think that little slight difference can make or break this match because these two are so closely intertwined in skill and how much they know each other. And then I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Boom. I wanna see this happen. I remember being at Oppensburg and we were talking about how Kerpalik should be the person to move up because he has the style to beat Teddy. And I think we're gonna see it at the Olympic Games and we're gonna see Kerpalik pull that off. I know it sounds crazy, but we're doing it. It's my predictions and that's what we have going on. So let's drop some of these other guys down here into these brackets. So right here we have Harasawa of Japan in the loser's bracket. And up here we have the Georgian. And then over here, and then the Ukraine, and then Brazil, and then Russia. And so this is what it's looking like right now. We have Russia versus Brazil, Ukraine, versus the Netherlands going into the finals. And for me, this is easy. We're going Russia and we're going Netherlands. Easy to pick. I think those two players outclass the other two, hands down, no questions asked. The question just becomes, when we're looking at this, who wins out of these matches? And I'm not sure about this one, but I would love nothing more than to see Japan get toppled in the heavyweight category. Um, and that's, I think, me just rooting for the underdog here. Um, I think Japan definitely has an edge with experience and everything like that. But I think the Russian player is young, hungry, and he's going to be excited to beat Japan on its home soil. Here, though, um, you know, this is a tough match. Netherlands versus Georgia, but I'm going to give it to the Dutch guy. 
I think his experience at the Olympic Games is going to be a factor. And he's just going to know how to tactically do just enough to pull that match out. And that's going to be the heavyweight final result where I have the Czech Republic beating France and Russia and Netherlands taking the bronzes.